Did you return from vacation feeling completely mentally and physically drained and exhausted? Hey, me too. So I went to Disney and I vlogged about it. And then I stopped vlogging about it because I got too tired. And now it's getting back into the mundane and ordinary routine of life with the addition of going back to work. <laughs> this is a really weird angle, I know, but my dog is right behind me and she thinks this is her bed, so she refuses to move for me. I know, I'm invading your space. I know, I know. So I got some sub work at a Broadway theater, which will help with, you know, all the spending I did at Disney. However, I didn't spend as much money as I, uh... I feel like there's a more specific word, but calculated may be correct because I did calculate my my spending but i'm really happy that i was able to come home with money so i underspent instead of overspent uh, i think it helped that it was so damn hot down in florida the amount of money i put you know aside to spend on food like i i didn't even use half of it let's just say that all those snacks i wanted to try didn't do it so let's start the show we're just gonna get back into the swing of things with a mundane vlog and just chill and relax and stress because i'm returning to work for the first time since april and it's at a different theater and i don't know how that'll go and you know anxiety and my brain is freaking out and oh my god ah! you know the usual is it snack time snack time yes <laughs> yes let's go it's Saturday and I am having a rough morning. So far I experienced a Charlie horse twice around 4 a.m. I almost slipped in the shower, I nicked myself in the shower, and then I almost wiped out trying to walk over my dog. All this on my first day back to work in four months. How fitting. Four months ago, this would have destroyed my bag because it's just too heavy. Let's see how we do now. Yeah. Walk it, test it out, okay, not bad. I think I balanced it enough. Let's add a fanny pack to the mix, sure, why not? Fashion. The train I was gonna take is late and it's close to the next train, which is what I would usually take, but because I have an earlier call time, that's why I wanted to take the train at 10 o'clock. We just arrived at 10.10, next train is at 10.21. I feel like I'm just gonna wait for the 10.21 because that's a semi-express anyway. I was just trying to play it safe, but uh, New Jersey Transit gone to New Jersey Transit. You know, it's crazy to think that just four months ago, I struggled to walk up and down these steps and I was using a cane. It still requires effort to go up and down these steps, but compared to where I was a few months ago, it's a huge improvement. Ah, uh, there's nothing like a beautiful view on a train. Times Square, I have not missed you so. So I'm in between shows right now and just picked up something for dinner. I know I haven't been to New York in a while, but I had no idea they didn't believe in any kind of bag anymore. <laughs> like I know about plastic bags, but not even paper bags. <laughs> so I have to walk up the street holding my food. <laughs> In my prime, I was able to walk from 42nd Street to Penn Station in 10 minutes. This time, it took me 11 minutes? Honestly, I have no idea how I managed that because while I am faster than a few months ago, I'm still at a slow pace, especially compared to New Yorkers. But 11 minutes, hey, I'll take it. This room just has the worst lighting ever. Well, I'm back at home and I get to do this all over again tomorrow. So this was my first time properly doing my job in over a year because March, April didn't count. I was doing like, I was just sitting there. 
I was doing nothing. I was sitting there because I couldn't do anything. And I was a dumb dumb who thought I could go back to work early and everybody warned me not to. And now I understand why. So this was the first time I was able to like fully do the job. So it was two shows full day. Like I left the house at 9.30 a.m. and just got in a little after 10.30 p.m. My body is obviously tired, so I made sure to take some Advil. And now I'm going to rest a little bit and then go to bed. So I'm back at work. Specifically, I'm subbing at my old theater, the place I left five years ago. A few people have asked me if it's weird being back there and in one way, it, it kind of is because it's been five years and due to everything that I've been through, there are a lot of bad memories attached to that place. But on the other hand, things have changed and there are different people in charge. So with everything that I went through five years ago, I knew that it would be a safe and comfortable place for me to return to. And by returning, it also feels like I never left. It's so weird how easily I was able to slip in. There were people there that were there when I left and they remembered me and they remember my name, although I'm pretty sure they asked somebody <laughs> to remind them what my name was. But it, it was a nice feeling that, you know, they remembered me and they were happy to see me. Things change a lot in the landscape of YouTube and especially with my channel. People are more so going than they are coming. So I don't think that many people who might be watching me now were around five years ago, maybe like a small few. So they may remember some videos I made about what was going on with me, which are now private because I, I was just so highly emotional at that point. And it, it's just not something I enjoy discussing. But for context, I will say that there were persons who caused me a lot of uh, distress and anguish and caused my mental health to greatly deteriorate and it got really bad and really dark for me. Um, and I knew that if I stayed at my job, it was not going to turn out well for me, to put it lightly. Hopefully you understand what I mean by that. It was a very difficult and painful time in my life, especially because I didn't feel like my managers like uh, were listening to me. Like I was trying to cry out. I mean, <laughs> one of my managers saw me cry every single day and it just felt like they didn't truly understand what I was going through. And I know on my end, I could have been um, more vocal about what I was going through, but also I just, I gave up because I did feel like nobody would have believed me or understood or truly listened, but that was my assumption. And knowing that those persons are no longer there and it being five years since I worked at that theater, I knew that I would be, you know, fine going back. I wouldn't have any stress or anxiety about being there. Probably a little insecurity. I think it's more so weird being there because I worked at that theater for nine and a half years and for five of those years I was uh, what you would say uh, was a supervisor level. Like I was on that kind of level and now I'm the complete opposite. I'm starting at just being a regular old employee. I'm low on the totem pole. Even though half the people know me, there are people who don't. And, you know, managers have changed, supervisors have changed. Like a lot has changed, but also a lot hasn't, which is so funny to me. And that's what helped to like make the transition into going there easy, I think. Honestly, the only thing I really have to worry about in regards to going back to that theater is my spinal fusion. In terms of that, I would say I'm at like a solid 92, 93%, like way, way better than it was back in March and April. I was still using a cane back then and I was struggling. Um, the only thing I'm really struggling with is going up and down stairs. If you've been to New York, then you know the stairs, especially the subway stairs are a workout. And I absolutely struggle trying to walk up the stairs. And then I get stressed out because, you know, at any given moment, there's gonna be people behind you. And I'm walking up very slowly, no matter how hard I try. I, just, I have to go slow, I have to take my time because my body won't let me otherwise. Also, I can feel that my, my center of balance, my equilibrium is off. So there's that fear of like, you know, losing my balance, falling over. The theater that I'm at, um, the stairs there are kind of scary depending where you are at the theater, especially when it's dark inside. <laughs> so I really have to take my time in there. And you know, there's that sense of anxiety, but 
go slow and steady. Hold on for dear life. That's all I could do. Lucky me has a couple of days off before a return to work, which um, I'm grateful for because my bag has been bothering me. Riddle me this, I didn't have any issues with my bag while in Disney, but as soon as I came home and started working again, my back was aching every night. And then yesterday I was having this really bad back pain that like causes a lot of discomfort whenever I try to sit. It's, a, it's actually a pain I've been dealing with throughout my recovery these past several months but a couple months ago it stopped and I thought, you know, it went away, but uh, now it's back for some reason, I don't know. But perfect timing for me, I see the physiatrist tomorrow and I'm supposed to get an epidural, which I'm kind of scared about. Here I was thinking there was no need for an epidural and I had no idea why the physiatrist recommended it to me, but here I am now thinking, huh, lower back's really hurting and bothering me. Maybe I do need an epidural. But at the same time, I realized that I think I'm stuck in assuming there should be an absolute with no pain when it comes to this recovery and the spinal fusion. But the reality is there's going to be pain. There's going to be discomfort, like the weather affects you, you know, those sorts of things. And I have to learn to deal with, you know, any of that whenever it pops up. Um, the lights just went out. <laughs> what the hell? And then they just came back on. <laughs> All right, there's been a change of plans. So I spoke to the doctor about my Disney trip. He asked how that was, how my symptoms were. And I told him that my back was great. Just had the issues with the legs and feet because I was walking so much. And I wasn't experiencing pain until I went back to work. And then a couple of days ago, I had that acute pain in uh, my lower back, like right where the fusion was. And he asked if I was having like any sciatic pain down my leg. And I said, no, in the past I did have that. But this pain is just very isolated right where, you know, the spine is. And he said, that because the pain isn't shooting down the leg, he doesn't think that an epidural is a good idea. So he suggested physical therapy. But the problem is I maxed out of physical therapy for my fusion. So the doctor has to figure out a different reason for me to go back. That's the only way I could get back into physical therapy. So he did SI joint tightness or something I can't remember it's SI joint something paid with the pelvis and now I have to call the physical therapist that I was seeing to see if that reason works if my insurance will accept that reason and if not call back to the doctor and he'll come up with another reason one thing I've learned over the past year is that once you're in the system for medical bills it's nonstop. They just keep coming and there are more and more reasons why you need to get something done and go see a doctor and pay yet another bill. Because here I am back to physical therapy. I apparently go, thankfully I'm making money right now, but this is also gonna affect my work schedule. And plus my mom has her schedule. She's gonna be starting radiation. <sighs> it's just never ending. Well, I just went through a fun process of making phone calls. First, I called my insurance company to see that I would be able to do physical therapy in the remainder of this calendar year because of all the physical therapy I did with my spinal fusion and they hung up on me. So then I called the physical therapist and she figured out that I would be okay, but I have 12 sessions left. Uh, the script is only for six weeks, so that's perfect, but it sounded like she was considering after that and I'm going, I don't, I don't want after that. I think I should be good. And then after that, I had to call my primary care physician for a referral for the physical therapy. It's just so great, so fun. You know, let's just end this video the same way I started it. That's the exciting stuff going on in my life right now. What's today? September 6th. Um, if anybody's interested in how I'm doing with my weight, especially after Disney, I've officially lost 45 pounds. October 1st, will be exactly one year since I started this process and I would love to lose 50 pounds by that point. It's possible, very possible. It's also possible it might not happen.
Between the IUD fiasco, my caloric intake dropping down on my fitness pal and having to adjust to that, and now returning to work in a mostly full capacity, it, some things are out of whack. So my weight loss per month has slowed down a bit. I'm still losing weight. Like I went from losing five to six pounds on average a month to now like three pounds, which is still great. It's fine. But it's possible because of those reasons that I won't reach the 50 pound mark by October 1st. But you know what? It's not like I'm going to stop. I'm not going to lose 50 pounds and then that's it. I got to keep going. So if that doesn't happen, it's fine. It's going to be a bummer if I don't reach that point, but it's fine because this entire process is honestly trial and error. It's been figuring things out. And this is why I seriously recommend not filming your weight loss journey, especially if you are not in the best place mentally and, you know, struggle with your emotions, struggle with things going wrong. You know, you have high anxiety and stress like me. I'm able to work through these problems off camera. I may stress about it at first, but then I'm able to slow down, think about it and, and work through it. And it, it, again, it's trial and error seeing, okay, does this work? No. Okay. Does this work? Yes. All right. Figuring it out along the way. That's really what my weight loss process has been. And I will be talking more about it when I reach the one year mark, like going through everything that happened. But I'm telling you now, it's boring. It's really, really boring. But that's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be boring. So you got that to look forward to. Maybe I will have lost 50 pounds by October 1st. Maybe not. But I'm still going anyway at some point. I've got to reach it. I am damn well determined to do that because a huge goal for me, like a huge, huge milestone is getting my weight below 250 pounds and staying below that mark because ever since my weight has gone above 250 pounds, I just, it, I've never been able to get it below that and I'm determined to make it happen finally and keep it there. All right, I'm gonna stop talking because I just love rambling. Thank you as always for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.